Good morning, I'm Tim McCrass. The teams are set for the 2008 NFL playoffs and the games are about to begin for this year's wild card round. Who's playing and who has the advantage in each of the games? Find out in our NFL postseason report. And I'm Pat McGuire. The Patriots did it. They completed their perfect season by going 16-0 after beating the New York Giants last week in the Meadowlands. They're three games away from their fourth Super Bowl in seven years. We'll preview who they might be going up against in the divisional round of the playoffs next week. Once again, good morning. You're watching This Week in Football. As always, I'm Tim Kras, and this is Pat McGuire. Last week in the NFL, the Patriots became the first team since 1972 to go undefeated in the regular season and the first team ever to go 16-0 in the regular season. The Redskins showed up, the number one seeded Dallas Cowboys, to earn a sixth seed in the NFC playoffs, and the Titans edged the Colts to take the AFC's sixth seed. Pat, what did you think of the games from last week? Well, Tim, what a weekend it was. The Patriots going 16-0 might go down as the greatest sports achievement of our generation. And it's something that will definitely be remembered for a long time and may be a very long time before we see it happen again. As for the Redskins and, Tit and Titans wrapping up the sixth seed in their respective conferences, good for them. They took advantage of two teams who rested their starters and did not really care about how the game went about. Both Washington and Tennessee needed to come up with wins and took advantage of the situation they were put in and the opportunity they were given. I'm interested to see how good they really are this afternoon when they take on teams that are also in the playoffs. Let's talk about the Patriots for a minute. Not only did they break the 16-0 record last week, they broke the overall team scoring record. Tom Brady broke the touchdown record, and so did Randy Moss break the touchdown record. Some fantastic achievements. Uh, definitely. This probably is the greatest team in NFL history. We'll, only the time will tell if they can get to the Super Bowl and win the Super Bowl. They'll definitely solidify themselves as the greatest team. All the records that they broke, the season that they had, the best regular season I think me, you and I, Tim, will ever see in our lifetime. Now, going into Wild Card Weekend, who is the hottest team in football? I think the Bucks are a hot team. I know that the, towards the end of the season they started to hit a little bit of a rocky road. I think they're an underrated team in the NFC. They have a good chance to come up with a win against the Giants this weekend and move on into the playoffs. I think they're a hot team in the NFC. Could upset some people, but definitely the Packers, Cowboys, got to look out for them. The NFC is really where the some parity can happen where think teams can take control and make a run. The AFC is pretty much locked up. Looks like it's going to be the Patriots and the Colts. would be a huge surprise if they didn't. The Jaguars are a little bit hot in the AFC, but we'll see how things go down. But I think the NFC is a lot more wide open the than the Patriots AFC. The Patriots are two to five favorites to win the AFC, which is almost 100%. Now, who needs the most work going into next year? Well, I think it's pretty obvious the Dolphins really need a lot of work. I think Bill Parcells, bringing Bill Parcells in was a huge addition to that team. I think he's really going to make a difference, really help the Dolphins get back on track. They should be able to bounce back next year, have a little bit of a better year than they did this year. The Falcons also have to improve. They had a rough season, losing their coach, losing Michael Vick. A lot of things have gone wrong for the Falcons. That organization needs to start from the bottom and now build up. They have absolutely nothing. They've hit ground zero. They need to start building back up. So those are two teams that definitely need to make a lot of changes. Now, do you think season. it was the, a big mistake for the Falcons and Arthur Blank to fire Jim Moore last year? Because uh, look at it right now, Petrino left halfway through the season. You know, maybe they might be regretting that. Possible coaching changes. Cam Cameron is gone as of this past Wednesday. Atlanta is open. Baltimore is open. Yeah, definitely. And you got a couple of nice uh, coaches out there. Jim Moore is a, is a good one. Tom Coughlin, I'm, I have a feeling he's going to be gone this year. Tony Sperano and Jason Garrett out of the Cowboys organization. Yeah, Bill Belich, uh, the, excuse me, the Ravens coach leaving is definitely going to cause a big opening there. That's a good team. He was there for a long time. There's definitely a big opening. It'll be interesting to see who takes over the Ravens job. I think that's the biggest because they're a decent team. They have a chance to make a run at the playoffs next year. Definitely had high expectations this year. Didn't quite fulfill them. So the Ravens job is definitely a good job to see who gets that one. We are going to take a short break here on This Week in Football. When we come back, Pat and I will bring you the playoff report.
Welcome back to This Week in Football. Our first game is a Sunday afternoon affair between the six-seeded Titans and the surprisingly three-seeded Chargers. Pat, does LT dominate or does Jim, Foster's, Jim Fisher's or Jeff Fisher's club have a surprise defeat up their sleeves? Well, Tim, last year we saw the Char Chargers go 14-2 and and lose in their first playoff game, which cost Coach Marty Schottenheimer's job. This year, I believe it'll be a different story. The Chargers started the season off very slow, losing their first two games, and everyone began to write them off. But Phillip Rivers slowly got used to the new offense, and they began to improve as the season went along. LT quietly led the league in rushing yet again, although he did not stack up the touchdowns like he has in the past. The Titans, on the other hand, barely squeaked into the playoffs, needing a win in Week 17 over the Colts, which they were able to get to get in. They looked like a beatable team all year. Jeff Fisher was even on the hot seat at one point in the season and looked like he was going to get fired, and only lately has this team been able to turn around. With Vince Young not at 100% heading into this game, it is unlikely that we will see an upset in this one. Oh, we'll, we'll talk about the Titans first. Vince Young, he's been hurt for most of this year, played through it, and now he's hurt again going into Wild Card Weekend. And it might just be better for the Titans just to go with Kerry Collins. It, it's definitely looking that way. I mean, they need Vince Young, though. Vince Young needs to play. He needs to be in this game. He needs to start. He's the emotional leader of this team. He's the physical leader of this team. He leads by example. We saw him do it in college against USC in the Rose Bowl, where he took control of that game, and he single-handedly won it for Texas. He has to singly, single-handedly win it for the Titans if they don't have any chance in this game. Chargers are a good team. They're playing really well. And without Vince Young, Titans have, the possibilities of Titans winning are even lower. Was the hit on Henry last week in the Colts game, was that a legal hit? I thought it was a little bit of helmet-to-helmet -helmet on the special teams return. Definitely a questionable call. It's something at the end of the season you really don't want to see. Definitely could go either way. I'm sure he didn't mean it, but it was a di difficult situation for both teams. Talk about the Chargers for a second. LaDainian Thomas in NFL's leading rusher, surprisingly because he didn't have a 100-yard rushing game throughout the first five games of the year. Can he carry a football team to the Super Bowl? Uh, not this year, I don't think so. I don't think that this Chargers team is good enough, but I think they are getting better every year. I think this team is even better than they were last year. Yes, last year they went 14-2. and two. I think this year they know in the playoffs now they're going to be better. They're going to play better in the playoffs. LT definitely got off to a slow start, but he was consistent throughout the rest of the season. And that's how he was able to get the rushing title. As I said, not too many touchdowns, so it wasn't that many, much news about him. But this team, I don't think Super Bowl ready. Definitely possibility in the AFC Championship game, but definitely not the Super Bowl. When will Phillip Rivers throw the game away? He's done it plenty of times this year, throwing interceptions. Obviously playing like he's a rookie quarterback, even though he's been in the league for three uh, four years now. Is he going to throw it away for the San Diego Chargers this year? No, he can't do it in this Titans game. This game shouldn't really be in reach for the Titans. It shouldn't be a situation where the fourth quarter the Titans have an opportunity to come back. But definitely as the later rounds go on and, and the teams get better and the, playoffs, and the Chargers go deeper into the playoffs, he cannot afford to make any mistakes and throw the game away like he has in the past. Tim, the next game on our showcase is the six-seed NFC, the Washington Redskins, and the three-seed in the NFC, the Seattle Seahawks. Both teams have kind of been under the radar for most of the season, but the Redskins have made an emotional turnaround in the closing weeks. Do the Redskins stay hot, or do the Seahawks prove that they deserve to be one of the NFC's best? Well, I think the Redskins really have the best shot at winning this game. They are running on both adrenaline and emotion because of the loss of Sean Taylor in late November. They are playing the best football. They've won three out of their last four games. They defeated the Cowboys last week. Even though the Cowboys rested their starters, it still, it still looked like when the starters were in, they, at least the Cowboys starting offense was in in the first half. It really looked like the Redskins defense was taking control of this game. They did a great job on the, def on the offensive side of the ball as well. Todd Collins, the lifetime backup quarterback for, both the, Red for the Redskins, He's doing a great job now. He was named the starter for this week. He doesn't make mistakes, which is the only thing you can ask for a quarterback. He, he's going to throw the ball away if he doesn't see, he, if he doesn't see a play. He's not going to force the ball in. He gets the ball to the open receiver. And more importantly, I believe he's using Chris Cooley a little, uh, enough to make Chris Cooley a factor and make Chris Cooley a, play, a, a pro bowl tight end, fullback, whatever you want to call him. If they can get him the ball a little bit more, Quentin Portis had a great game last week, 126 yards, two touchdowns. If they could just stay consistent with this, it looks like they're going to be heading to Dallas next week for another Dallas Cowboy-Washington Redskins rematch. A very bold call there is the Redskins are the sixth seed team. Now let's talk about the future of the Redskins, not so much in the rest of this season, but into next season. Jason Campbell is a young quarterback. Joe Gibbs is an old coach. Does Joe Gibbs stay around? Is, can Jason Campbell be the starter for this team for the years to come and continue to lead them to the playoffs? Well, no doubt Joe Gibbs is going to say, but I really think that the Redskins have found a starting quarterback. Now, Jason Campbell, when he was in, he wasn't really playing the type of football that you get an experienced player with. Todd Collins is, did a, is doing a fantastic job right now with this football team. He's going to 
be a high price, even though he's a lifetime backup. He's going to cost a pretty penny. But I still, I think the Redskins are going to go after him. I believe he will be the starter, at least for the start of next year. Jason Campbell may be on the, later, toward the end of next year, depending on what the Redskins do in the beginning of the season. But I believe that it'll be, it'll be Todd Cam uh, Todd Collins next year. Definitely. As a playoff team, having a Super Bowl con or a quarterback controversy is never really a good thing. Let's talk about the age of the Seahawks for a little bit. Sean Alexander has really slowed down in the last couple of years after his MVP season. He hasn't been able to repeat those stats, hasn't been able to have the season that he's wanting to have. Matt Hasselback's getting a little old. The team's really starting to age. Don't seem as good as they are, but yet they still are the three seed. Is this team getting a little too old, or do they still have it in them to make a good well, run? I, the Super I think Bowl? Their strength, their, the strength of their schedule was the biggest reason why they were third seed. They're playing in, that, in the NFC West. They got the 49ers. You, you should be able to beat twice. It's just, it's not, a, it's not a very hard division to win. You know, they are the three seed, but they don't really deserve it. They didn't play Dallas. They didn't play the Packers. They, they, they didn't play the Patriots. The teams that are the top, the top teams in the league. They are getting old. They're getting banged up. You know, uh, Mike Holmgren has already supposedly said this year that he's going to be looking toward a retirement age in the com in the uh, in the coming years. So. They are getting old. I, I, don't, I honestly don't think either of these two teams are Super Bowl worthy. And at Seahawks, I wouldn't be surprised if they got blown out this week. Well, our next game will be the game to watch in the tri-state area as Tom Coughlin's Giants head to Tampa to face the Buccaneers. Pat, does Eli Manning and his offense have enough to beat the playoff experience of the Buccaneers? Well, Tim, I really don't think the Buccaneers have come into today after losing Week 17, and this one is a really tough one to call. I was impressed with how the Giants handled the Patriots last week, and if they play the same way today, I'm sure they will come away with the victory. The key for the Giants is to not throw, not throw away the game and give up a key turnover late in the game. Eli Manning threw a late interception in the Patriots game that allowed the Patriots to take the lead and that really cost the Giants a game. The Giants cannot afford to have him do that against the Bucs. Now, over to the Bucs for a minute. Jeff Garcia is the most underrated quarterback in the NFL and the Bucs may be the most underrated team in the NFC. Garcia has led his teams to, back, to the playoffs back to back years, last year with the Eagles and this year with the Bucs. He has played well and he has a lot of playoff experience and knows how to win big games. This one is a tough one to call and may go down to a last minute field goal or last minute drive that wins it for one team. Well, Eli Manning has, had, has the reputation now of in the big game, he likes to throw the ball away. Last week, it was the interception against Dallas. He threw two picks in the second half. Is he going to do it again this week, or does he have the game of his life? That's the key for the Giants. If Eli Manning doesn't make that mistake, they come away with the win. They play well. Everyone's happy. When Eli Manning does make that mistake, they lose the game. The Giants struggle. Things don't get going. The defense has to spend a lot of time on the field, and it makes a difference for the Giants. Eli Manning cannot afford to make that mistake, especially it always seems to come in the second half when the Giants have lead or are trying to make a run. So it's a key point in the game, and it's really usually the turning point for either team. So the Giants cannot allow, cannot allow Eli Manning to throw that interception. They have to get a good enough lead where even if he does throw the interception, the Giants still have a a good chance of winning the game. Can the Giants rally to keep Tom to keep Tom Coughlin's job this week? Because if they lose, my gut feeling is that he's going to be fired the, on Monday morning. Well, if they lose, he's definitely going to be on the hot seat. Definitely going to be an interesting call to see what the Giants do. I think they can get a win against Tampa Bay. It, it's really it's a really tough one to call because both teams are really pretty evenly matched. The Giants do get a win. I think Coughlin does keep his job. I don't see the Giants going much further than this game if they do get a win. Did you see, think the Giants last week like, kind of laid back after they got the 12-point lead going into halftime and just started playing a defensive game and not playing aggressive like they did in the first half? A little bit. I did think they, they got the lead. They decided that you know they were already going to the playoffs and they did just try to hold on to the lead and get the win. I think it was, it was, Giants were an interesting spot. They wanted to win the game. They wanted to be the one who beat the Patriots, beat the undefeated team. They do have a big playoff game coming up in the next week. While most of the other teams are resting their starters, they, those guys were all out there. It's a little bit of an interesting game plan for the Giants. Didn't quite play out as well as they wanted, but it, you know, that doesn't matter now. The Giants have moved on. They're into the playoffs, and now I can focus and on the Bucs. Just from the, the emotion of the game, I thought in the first half, if the Giants just kept pounding the ball, they were going to come out with a victory. Didn't happen. Now let's talk about the Buccaneers for a second. Does Tampa sitting their starters last week affect them this week as they go into as they play host to the Giants? I don't think so. I think they did they did lose to the Buccaneers last week. It was an interesting game, or they did lose to the Texans. So it, very interesting game. Definitely a different point. Jeff Garcia not playing. He's a little bit of an older guy. He needs time to rest. I think resting the starters is a good idea for a team that's already bound into the playoffs. As I said, the Giants were an interesting situation. They weren't allowed to do it. But I think resting your starters is the right thing to do for a team that already has their wild card spot locked up. So definitely a good choice by Buccaneers but we'll see how it plays out for them today. 
Tim, our final matchup for Wild Card Weekend is between the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Jacksonville Jaguars. The Jags heated up as the season wound down and are picked by many to be the surprise in the AFC playoffs. Can Big Ben use his playoff experience to take the Steelers to the next round? Well, that's a very good question. This is probably my game of the week, other than that, the Redskins-Seahawks game. That's going to be a real good game. But I think this game is gonna, just going to be the, a little bit better. You know, this is a rematch from a game two weeks ago. The Jag, ja, the, it was back and forth all game. The Jags wound up scoring a touchdown on Fred Taylor's 22-yard rushing touchdown late in the game. They held the Steelers to, to the, on, on a fourth down and very, very short. It's going to be it's going to be a coin flip, I think, this week. But I I think that they uh, the Jaguars are the favor this week. Ben Roethlisberger a little bit roughed up last uh, two weeks ago. Sat out last week's game. Charlie Batch started last game. He did a fantastic job for the Steelers. But I, I still think that Ben Roethlisberger is just a little bit banged up. It's Jack Del Rio plays a defensive game, and if you have a good defense, you're going to be able to beat the, pa the, the Steelers because their quarter, their team is run mostly on their offensive side of the football. The Jaguars can do it. Jack Del Rio will win his first, will win a playoff game. They will be going next week to I believe it'll be Indianapolis next week, depending on who wins. I think the Jaguars will go to. Indianapolis. Jaguars a hot team and in, head into the playoffs. Definitely going to look like they're going to get the win over the Steelers. Now, can either of these teams, regardless of who wins, make a run at the Colts and Pats or possibly beat either the Colts or the Patriots? I don't think the Jaguars can. Or the Jaguars might be able to beat the Colts, but if the Jaguars have to go up to, to, New, uh, to New England to play in a blizzard, the blizzard conditions of, of, uh, of the, the, um, the, the field, uh, they won't be able to do it because they play in Florida. But I do think if the Steelers can win and they can beat they, they and they can beat the uh, the Colts next week or whoever they play, they're going to be the, the the team to beat because they play in those conditions. They play in the cold weather. They have the two games in, in, where it was snowing or frigid weather, so they've proved that they can play in the tough conditions. It'll be a coin flip. It'll be a coin flip this week, but I'm expecting Jaguars to go into t Indianapolis next week. Well, Pat, it's now time for our WLTS Awards for Week 17. Who do your awards go to? Uh, Tim, my MVP is going to go to Tom Brady. What a huge game he had in the Patriots. Going 16-0, broke the record through his 50th touchdown of, of the season. To, to the, my man, who also is getting the, another MVP, MVP award, Randy Moss, broke the single-season touchdown reception record with his 23rd reception from Tom Brady. Those two guys combined. Really, with the talk of the league, Randy Moss reinvented his career. He's now back to being one of the top receivers in the league after a couple of years of really being down low and looked down upon. Both these guys made huge waves. They were the difference for the Patriots, and they're the reason that the Patriots went 16 and 0. Now, LVP's got to go to the New York Jets. 10 and 6 last year, not the same result this year. Terrible season for the Jets. Things did not go well. It was a bumpy road the entire time. Kellen Clemens, Chad Pennington, both really didn't play well. They really have a big question mark at quarterback now. Eric Mangini didn't really have the season that he came out. His sophomore season was a little bit different than his, his first year after they went 10-6. and six. Jets, a definitely disappointing team. Thomas Jones didn't come out and play as good as he was supposed to. Jets could really have to look to rebound next year. Well, my MVP is going to go to the Washington Redskins. They did a great job since the middle of November when Sean Taylor, when Sean Taylor was killed. Won three of the last four, beat the Cowboys. They found a starting quarterback in Todd Collins and Quentin Portis and Chris Coy are really doing a fantastic job on the offensive ball, on the offensive side of the ball. The defensive side of the ball is really shutting down def the offenses. They really shut down the Cowboys' offense to only one rushing yard in four quarters and 186 passing yards throughout the whole game. They are really running on high, and I'm looking forward to another Cowboy Giant, re uh, Cowboy Redskin rematch in the division round of the playoffs. Now, my least valuable player, performer player goes to the New Orleans Saints special teams. Going into the game last week against the Bears, Sean Payton was all talk, oh, we're not going to kick Devin Hester. We're not going to let Devin Hester beat us. Well, what does they do? The first punt, the first punt for the Saints, punter kicks it right to Devin Hester. Devin Hester returns it for 70-something 70, yards for a touchdown. The next, punt, the next punt, what does he do? Kicks it to Devin Hester. Though it was short, they're not kicking the ball out of bounds, which is what Sean Payton said they were going to do. The New Orleans Saints are going to be looking for a special teams quarter ne next year, I believe, and they're also going to be looking for a new punter because I believe both of them will be losing their jobs this year. Clo uh, last comments for this week, wild card weekend, Pat? Definitely interesting to see who comes out. Teams have to make a statement in the AFC show that they can at least compete with the Colts and Patriots. Colts Patriots are the definite favorites in the AFC. Some of these teams, wild card weekend, are going to have to make a statement and show that they're ready to take on one of these teams. Looking forward to a Washington Redskins Dallas Cowboy divisional game. I'm looking forward to the Jaguars going on in the playoffs to beat the Steelers. Uh, that's pretty much it for me until next week. For Pat McGuire, I'm Simulcrass. Happy Sunday, Lacey Township. And enjoy your football.